Bearing a family name that is legendary within the racing world, Peter and Tim Easterby have enjoyed numerous high-class success along the years. Peter trained greats such as Night Nurse, Sea Pigeon and Little Owl. While in more recent years, son Tim has tasted classic success with Volin Eric and a handful of Royal Ascot triumphs. Cape of Good Hope coming with a run, Crystal Castle with the white face, Bear Jag goes to the front, Crystal Castle angles out underneath Cape of Good Hope, Avonbridge still in there pitching, Bear Jag hanging out towards the centre, it's still just in front, Cape of Good Hope and Crystal Castle are coming with late thrust, but just too late, Bear Jag won the Golden Jubilee. And now Solness in the centre, Somnus in the centre has loomed up, grabbed the lead, here comes Whipper with a big run, Whipper is quickly out after Somnus and Ashdown Express is starting to storm home, Som Somnus in front of Whipper and also Ashdown Express. And on the near side is Dolma. Dolma the filly. She looms up Somnus. Dolma, they hit the line with Whipper. This is very tight. But at the final flight of hurdles, and Barton has jumped the last in grand style and is drawing away from the French Furs in second. Back in third place is Master Bevel, but it's a winning comeback for Barton as they race now inside the final 150 yards. The third winner of the afternoon for Tony Dobbin, and Barton is back in style, wins the attempt fighting fifth hurdle by five lengths. Barstad making late ground with Malia. Inside the final furlong, it's still Periston View on the far side. Guanami is coming there with a run. Stand side, it's further out. Look at Marsad. And also in the centre, making ground Pippalong and Bonami. And Bonami and Pippalong have raced to the front in the centre. Very close, Pippalong and Bonami. And basically, we're, we're horse dealers, really. That's how we used to live. Start up with point to point horses. Anything they would sell. And the record books tell me you started with only seven horses? Yeah, and they weren't all genuine. And seven, you'd have seven to get your licence. <laughs> and a brown mare down, Hunter, a show jumper, and the rest were thoroughbred horses. So you had to really build the, the place from scratch as far as stables and gallops were concerned? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yes. And the gallops you use today, are they, are they the original ones? Or? No, no, far from it. We used to go around a little uh, six-acre field. That's where we trained them. That's all we had. And then a few owners started to come along. The thing is to set off, you to go and buy a horse and sell it. That's the main thing, sell it. If you keep them all, you go skinned. So we set off like that, went to Newmarket. Each dike there, each dike back. I bought three yearlings for 280 guineas. For the three, I got them all sold. They were all no good. So that was the end of that stat again. And you hitchhiked all the way to Newmarket. Well, I got a lift with the, the late Billy Dutton in his car. Then I, I came back the same day as I went, and I finished up in a furniture van from the crossroads on the A1 back to York. And then got a bus to Tim Alton. Then I had my bicycle waiting, seven miles back, all in a day. From this basic start, Peter became the first trainer to saddle over 1,000 winners under both flat and jump codes. Peter's golden era came in the 1970s and started with a horse called Night Nurse. Well, it cost a thousand. And I had his half sister. It would look like being a very good hurdler, and she had a bad fall at Weatherby. Uh, and so I saw this horse, a big common horse, he's Oxford in the next county. Anyway, I bought him. And there was in the ninth people, the person that saw him, he bought him off me. And he's so girl... you tried eight people? Yeah, absolutely. They didn't want him? And poor old laddie was about blind, he couldn't see him. He said, he's a lovely colour, Peter. I said, he is. I thought, he will be if you buy him. <laughs> anyway, I scolded him. And I thought, by God, this jumps. He did, he did nick a race somewhere. I think it was ripping, but he was no good on the flat, really. What did you see in the horse, then? You said he was a big, plain-looking thing, but you must have seen something in him. Yeah, well, I must have done, but I can't tell you. It's a long time since. The price was right for a start. That's number one. What do you remember about his champion hurdles? Oh, plenty. What do I remember about him? Well, the, the, the last time he won it, 
It was like a bog, very soft. And he'd only ever won on um, firm ground. He, he won his first race at Market Raisin, won about a short head. Then he kept winning, he kept winning. And uh, we worked him at Doncaster. Paddy rode him, very soft ground. Paddy Broderick? Yeah, on his own he was. He says, yes, he'll go in the bog this. Anyway, he did go in the bog. He went out from about five to two to seven to one. And we'd backed him at five to two. So we didn't want to miss the, the price. So we're a bit more than five to one. I thought, what the hell's happening here? Seven to one? So I said to Keith, who you met this morning, have you ever left this horse? Thinking he might have been got at. No, 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 no. So we had to have a bit more, hadn't we? So that was a good day. And he didn't let you down, that was the Monksfield. That's race. correct, yeah, yeah. It's a tough race because he was a good horse, Peter, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely. Stayed. It was, was it, it was a golden it. era, that, wasn't it, for, for hurdles? Well, it looks as though it's been, I wouldn't know. It's mm. up to the, the, the scribes to decide that, really, isn't it? Well, they all say on, on record it was yeah. probably the best era, you know, Comedy of Errors, Lanzarote, yeah. Bird's Nest, all those fantastic horses, and for you to have the, the kingpin yeah. of the day must have been a bit yeah. special. Oh, it was, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was a good party. Now, after Cheltenham, he went to Aintree, didn't he, for the, for the Temple Gate and re it. renewed his rivalry with Monksfield. Uh, and we met uh, him seven pound worse. And if it, he, you know, I think it's about the only mistake he made in his life was that day. I think it was two out. Just stopped him in his tracks a bit. Of course, we got back up and dead eat it. So that might have cost him the win? I think it would have done, yeah. But nevertheless, to, to dead heat with with a great horse like Monksfield, yeah. giving the horse best part of half a stone, that, yeah. that's a measure oh, of the, the class of your horse. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, it's a good horse, yeah. And again, we've got to rely on the scribes, but um, yeah, they, they right. put that down in the in the history books as probably the greatest uh, hurdle race of all time. Yeah. I suppose the handicappers are deciding one way, don't they, with the ratings. The... Next move with Night Nurse Peter was to go chasing, wasn't he? He was he, he looked a natural and, and he yeah. it proved to be the case. Absolutely. The one mistake big mistake I made with him, he should have gone uh, chasing the year before. Because he missed out on the hurdles. I don't know why, I can't remember. But he wasn't just himself. And of course he got three mile, no problem. And but for another horse that you uh, know well he'd he'd have won a gold cup, wouldn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Little Owl won it that year. Very good horse, uh, yeah. Eight, 81 and, and Night Nurse was second. Second. Unfortunately, Little Owl got a very bad virus after that. And he broke in blood, blood vessels, everything went wrong with him. And he was no good after that. Just wrong. And he was a young horse at the time. Oh, he was only seven, yeah. He might have been six, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, Night Nurse... Uh... An, ama an amazing record. He's, yeah. uh, I understand he's, he, he's buried here, isn't he? He's buried there where those trees are, look. Him and uh, Sea Pigeon are there. Another all-time great. Um, and my wife my, my wife died last September and she wanted her ashes put where Night Ness and Sea Pigeon are, so that's what we did. Oh, what a lovely gesture. Mm. And, uh, well, no, no, no finer resting place, I'm sure. And uh, uh, we, we, we mentioned Sea Pigeon there. Yeah. Well, he's, he was another legend, wasn't he? But he uh, you were telling me earlier on that he, was, uh, he wasn't the most straightforward of horses when you got him. Yeah, far from it. Brakes were nil. He was very, very keen. The only reason why he didn't beat Sea Pigeon, he was always too keen in a race. And we got him stopped with that. Of course, he settled down and he was champion and lost himself. How did you manage to settle the horse? Well, I don't know. Really no, I tell you what, uh, we, we put him into a routine and never altered it. Same gallop, same thing every day. None of this going to a fresh place. That's all bunkum. That's what. Anyway, I suppose Mark Birch did a lot because he used to ride him every morning. He used to try to run away cantering down, run away coming back, and all of a sudden they got the message. It doesn't to be like that.
And he was, uh, again, he wasn't an expensive horse. Je Jeremy Tree had him, didn't he, as a two-year-old? And... He read him, did uh, uh, Whit Mr Whittingham, I think it was. He was the ambassador, American ambassador. Jeremy Tree trained him. Lester Piggott won on the horse as a two-year-old as well. Did he? Apparently. Oh, really. And, uh... and he ran in the derby, didn't he, Sea Pigeon? Lester might have ridden him in the champion earl as well. <laughs> because John Joe was off. Who do we get? I was down at the Derby Awards, sat next to Lester. I said to Lester, he rides sea pigeon? He said, I'm riding him, he said. No problem. And he just could easily have ridden him. Really? If John Frankham couldn't have ridden. He'd have been up for the challenge. Oh, definitely. Oh, I. He'd have won a short end, he'd have given you heart failure. <laughs> now, that was, I think that was the, the second time he won it, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, When um, John Joe was injured, I think. That's right, yeah. Well, you had an able deputy there in Tom. Very. Oh, absolutely. I keep reminding him as well. Do you remember much about the race, Peter? Yeah, I remember it well, yeah. You can see, I mean, uh, he was very, very good with John. Nerves of steel. He didn't let him go till he had to. He only had one short run. You went too early, you didn't win. John Joe was his regular partner, though, wasn't he, on the race oh, course? Yes, and he'd yes. won the previous champ champion hurdle on That's Seekers. right, yeah. Yeah. And also, Rode the horse on the flats. Uh, in the he, he, he won the e board, didn't he? Ten stone. Yeah. Short just, just, just recall that for me, if you will. Oh, well. That was a hair raising moment. Oh, not half. John Joe dropped his hands on the line. And I'll, I'll see Pigeon, as soon as you drop your hands, he'd pull up, wouldn't he? And uh, I think John Joe was the only one who thought, it, thought he'd won. And so it was a. Uh, a photo finish, it was a nerve-wracking wait to find out if he'd won or not. Yeah, it wasn't long, but he, when they announced it, it was naturally a Yorkshire horse and, and a popular winner, and the, the fella only got C out, you couldn't hear Pigeon because there was such an uproar. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a few choice words with the jockey when he came back? Not really, no. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah. Did just enough. And... I mean, Sea Pigeon's uh, win wins, big wins would be on that. He won a Chester Cup as well, didn't he? He won two. two. Yeah. Yeah. So, a completely, for all his quirks early on, a, a completely versatile horse. You know, he, he, he'd win an e ball, he'd go around Chester. Oh, uh, he was a good horse. He could run him anywhere. Mm. He won a tank, Wokes Tanker, and that twice. What, mm. what made him great, do you think? Ability. That's all. Natural ability. Ability, yeah. If they haven't got that, they won't be great, will they? Mm. What do you recall of his champion hurdle wins? <coughs> uh, we really thought he'd win it the, f the first year when he won. Really, really fancied him, like, you know. Because he, he was... A, I don't think anything's ever done that when he, when he won in Ireland. He won the Irish sweeps. It's a four-year-old. I don't think a four-year-old's ever won it. But it wouldn't, well, I don't even think I can run it, but he, he was only a four-year-old when he won that. And... Um, he was just a fantastic horse, like, you know, just um, His jumping was his big thing, like, you know. He was a brilliant, big, bold jumping horse. Jumped off and galloped, and he just kept going. And those battles with the great Monksfield in the second uh, champion hurdle, then at yeah. Aintree, a oh, yeah. stuff of legend, yeah. don't they? That must have been the greatest race ever at, uh, at Liverpool with him and Monksfield. Because Night Nurse, if you remember, made a, a moderate... Uh, he made a bad mistake at the third last or the second last, I think. And he was—he he often used to do that, you know, night that's on time, like. And um, I never forget when they came in. Um, remember, Desi used to say, "Well, nobody deserves to lose the race, like you know," which was a great thing. It was a dead heat, like you know. I mean, I don't know if you get it was a photograph in them days. I don't know, but I mean, it was a dead heat, and everybody was happy. I think, like, it was a fantastic race, like you know. Peter went on to train many great horses, including on the flat with Kingstown winner Goldhill and Jim Crack winner Son and Gold, to name but a few. So Peter, three times champion trainer, all those winners. Yeah. You yeah. came to 1996 and you decided that it was time for you to take a, a back seat. Yeah. But you'd got the perfect man to replace you. Yeah, well, I noticed. Uh, we're having a good run. It's no good waiting while you're having a bad Hand over to your son, is it? And I also noticed, very seldom you get a young owner going to an old trainer. In other words, you run your time, and that's it, it happens to everybody, you know? 
So you thought it was the perfect time to, to make the switch? Well, it worked out, it did, yeah. He's done you proud, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely, yes. I was keen. Very much so. How special was it to see Tim win the, the St Ledger with Bollinary? Oh, marvellous, because we bred the horse, you know, here. And, yeah, very special. And really, Tim's carried on the, the, the same ethos. It's, it, it's, it seems to me that it's been a, a seamless tra transition, really. It's, you, you like to keep things simple, and yeah. that's, that's the sure, secret to the success. Can, yeah. yeah. You're still very involved, though, aren't you? Oh, very much so, yeah. Well, you're better with two heads, better than one. When you took over uh, the, the training operation in 1996, uh, of course, it would have been an exciting time for you, but was there some degree of pressure? Because your dad was a hard act to follow, wasn't he? Uh, not, not really, because, you know, you, you just had to get on with it, you know, because, you know, father had, had enough training, he'd done enough telephoning and things. Um, uh, and uh, I was ready to, to have a go, you know. And it was uh, a success pretty much right from the start, but Dad's always been there, not necessarily just in the background, but he's, it must be a great help even today to have him by your side. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's great, you know. We, um, we've got a good team, you know, because uh, I've got uh, uh, three children there all involved in the operation as well, my wife, Sarah. William Emily, William's amateur Friday, and Emily's working and studying at school still, and Thomas, who's seven, he's quite into the racing. So it's uh, Sarah does most of the secretary work and helping the office and racing, you know. It's always been a big family business, and uh, just just going back to Peter, uh, he's, uh, that, that wealth of experience, you, you just can't buy that, can you? you can't. No, it's, it's it can't. Yeah, it, it, you know, you, you, uh, he's seen a lot of things and, you know, different feeds and different ways of training horses and it all comes down to the same end, really. You've got to keep them healthy and got to keep them sound, you know. Tim has enjoyed plenty of high-level success himself since taking over the reins, including classic glory. As they run down towards the final furlong and it's Bolin Eric for Yorkshire here. Some great horses have gone through your hands over the years, and the, the first big success, uh, of course, came with Bolin Eric in the St Ledger 2002. What are your recollections of that day? Yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, we, we always sort of wanted to try and train him for that race, really. We we skipped out running him in the derby, and, you know, we we, we sort of wanted to try and... We, we thought that was his race, you know? Um, and uh, it, it came off, you know? It all seemed to go quite smoothly on the day? Yeah, it did, and when we got there it was nice ground and, you know, it, the race was right for him, which was very important. Everything was spot on. Mm. And uh, for the owners, the Westbrooks, uh, great supporters of the stable, a, a, a proud day for them as well. Yeah, wonderful. They're, you know, it was a climax of their owning race horses with us, which was, you know, three generations. They uh, started with my Uncle Walter, Walter used to be. And then father and then me, and you know it was it's been great. Um, I actually uh, actually bought the dam, the Bolin Eric for them, and at the Goff sale because Sir Neil fancied an Alzeo filly, and that was his first crop. And uh, she won a few races. She was tricky to train. She was a bit bit of a madam, but she was good. And uh, she bred Bolin Joanne before that, who won the Duke of York, and then. Uh, Lady Westbrook sent to, to Shamit, which wouldn't have been everybody's choice, but it worked out well. Another good horse, uh, an exceptional horse, was Somnus in more recent years, who was champion sprinter in Europe, wasn't he, in his pomp? He uh, won a number of big races, including the, uh, the, the, the big sprint at Haydock. Yeah, he was, he was a very, very good horse. Uh, he had to have a bit of juice in the ground, although he did win the top race on fast ground as a two-year-old. But uh, with juice in the ground, he was a very, very good horse. And he wasn't expensive either, was he? He was, well, he was bred by Lady Ledgeard, and uh, she didn't, she couldn't sell him as a year. And uh, I got Roger Sidebottom to go in with a share with her. Um, nearly took a share myself, I didn't. 
um, and uh, he was a wonderful racehorse for us. Another filly who won the Duke of York was Pippalong. She was a bit special also. Yeah, she won with a, with a penalty. She was she was a very good filly. Uh, very good two-year-old. She was second in the Queen Mary, uh, beat Bintelisle at York, giving her seven pound. Got left in the Queen Mary, actually. Um, but was she was wonderful. And she went on to win the Palace House and the big sprint at Haydock as well. Yeah, she did. You know, with... with you know, you, we can train them if, they're, if they arrive here, no problem. Sprinters uh, have really been good for you, haven't they? And, you know, we can mention a, a number of others. Fair Jag, for example, who was a, a Group 1 winner. I mean, that must have been a, an exceptionally uh, proud day when he won the Jubilee. Yeah, it was. Uh, and he won the walking of the year before, dead heated with it. Uh, you know, it was a fantastic day. He liked really rattling firm ground. And it was rattling that day at Ascot. I would say it was bordering on being hard. It was firm, hard, you know, very, very firm. Couldn't get you, couldn't get you really at all. Oh, and he came really through the handicap ranks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he did, yeah. He, he struggled to win as a two-year-old, and he, and he got a little, pick a little injury as a two-year-old, and then we, uh, and he, he really copped his handicaps nicely. And uh, he was, you know, always a very talented horse. Yeah, you lost him in rather tragic circumstances, didn't you, in a stalls yeah. accident at Pontefract? Yeah, he was very tricky in the stalls, and he ran at the stalls and broke his shoulder, which was very sad. And we look around the yard, you talk about this being a, a family business, but it, it's almost a who's who of racing when you look through the yard. Keith Stone is still very much a, a big part of the setup. Uh, he was instrumental in that great horse night nurse, wasn't he, back in the 70s? Yeah, he was, yeah, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's a matter of trying to keep a good team going, really. And, uh, and that's what strikes me about this operation. That it seems to me that the people who are with you have been with you for years, so it's a very settled team. Russ Garrity, former top jockey, he's here as well. Uh, yeah. David Dutton, won a yeah. Scottish Grand National, uh, he's been with you for, for, for quite some time. It seems to be a very settled team. Yeah, you know, we've got a good, uh, good team, good, good head lads. Uh, three very good head lads. Good travelling head lads, Jordy and... You know, it's it's all, you know, it's all. A, it has to work, you know, when you have training resources. It's all down to attention to detail, really. It's very important you keep the attention of who's what's eating up, and, you know, little bits of scratches. Just little things, things that can yeah. make all the difference. Little things make a big difference, and you know, you have to get them on the track sound, you know. I'm sure that you, you feel continuity, Tim, as well, is, uh, is really important as far as your jockeys are concerned. And pretty much like the staff around the stable, the jockeys have been very constant. David Allen uh, has been your stable jockey for a number of years. Duran Fentiman is, is very much uh, a part of the team as well. Yeah, they are, you know, it's important. But, you know, I, do, I don't mind uh, putting other jockeys on, actually, sometimes. Just you get a bit of a different opinion, you know. And sometimes it, it works with different horses with different jockeys, so we don't have to stick to the same ones all the time, but they, they've they been pretty good to me, you know. Tim gave me the ride on, on body and soul, and look, luckily enough I've won some nice races on her and, and done well for the yard for her. Yeah, that filly really seemed to get you going last year. Yeah, she, she got us going and put the name in the paper in the in the good races, so now it's good. The One of the biggest benefits that you offer this yard is... Um, is that ability to do light weights, and I think that also appeals to outside trainers as well. Yeah, I can do the light weights, and you know, with so many runners, we have plenty of light weights about, and so try and win on them, try and keep the ride on them. I'll tell you something, I bet there's no shortage of advice on offer here, is whether it's friendly banter or, or, or serious advice. There are so many experienced uh, former former jockeys here. It really it really is a, a, a there's a wealth of experience. Yeah, there's the good advice. <laughs> there's the bad advice, and then there's the, the tellings off when you do something wrong. So yeah, no, it's good. Dave, you go back a long way with the Easter Bees. How did you get involved? Um, actually, it was a uh, Lindsay Chan, a retired jockey, mentioned me to come in here. At the time, I was at Allen Berry's and I wanted to change and uh, went to Melbourne for a year and then uh, came here the year after. So I've been here a long time now. Good decision to come here because uh, you've become a cornerstone of the of the success and. Uh, you know, you've, you've had a good career out of it. Yeah, it was uh, the right time, really. Everything fell into place. I was just losing my claim at the time as the jockeys who were here went elsewhere, so it was a prime position. What's Tim like to work for as a trainer? Uh, very laid-back. 
and you don't get too much hassle off him. He's, he lets you go out and uh, you know he lets you read the form and ride your own race. So quite comfortable and easy to ride for. With a good team behind him and his legendary father still involved with the day-to-day -day running of the yard, Tim is certainly looking ahead to a bright future. Still plenty of time left to uh, to find a few more champions. I'm sure you're going to be training for a long time yet. Um, is is there a particular burning ambition? Is there is there one sort of race that you'd really like to win? Um, yeah, there is. Really. I'd like to win the. Um, I'd like to win the champion early if possible. But that's you know, I just you need the right horse for that, obviously. Um, Dad did it five times. Yeah, no, it takes a bit of following that, you know. But we we tend to have gone down for the flat racing. Only because of the racing in the north of England, it really lends itself to flat racing. You know, you've got a lot of flat meetings around here. Good Without travelling to Yeah, fun. good prize money. Um, jumping meetings are coming back, you know. But Trying I've, to get those good jumpers these days seems maybe a lot more difficult than it used to be. I mean, you know, horses like Night Nurse, I think, were, were bargain buys. You, you don't yeah. seem to get horses like that anymore unless you pay big money for them. Yeah, you, you, you can do yeah, they, they do happen. You know, they definitely will. They'll keep happening because it's uh, it's just part of the job and just part of the great thing about racing is money doesn't always buy all the best ones, you know. You've had some nice jumpers. Yeah, I've had some very good ones, Barton and, you know, really, really good horses, you know. But uh, well, We talk about your CV, um, plenty of high-level high flat winners, but Barton won not only at the Cheltenham Festival but also at Aintree. Yeah, very good horse. You know, I had a very good horse called... Scott and Banks, he was a good horse a few years ago and we had some really good jumpers. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever it is, you'd want to try and keep your level up and try and get the best level. Good jumpers, good flat horses if possible. You obviously get your low grade ones, which you have to place to win races and it's a good kick trying to win a race with an ordinary horse, you know.